Hey everyone, I wanted to show you how I'm collecting optical spectra data with my new oscilloscope. So here we have a spectrometer that I just finished building today, and I'll talk about this more in another video, so I'm just going to go over it really briefly now, and then spend most of the time talking about the scope setup. Uh, I have a compact fluorescent bulb here, wrapped in foil just to keep it from being too distracting, and it's shining its light through a slit that I made with two razor blades on the inside of the spectrometer housing. And then there's a diffraction grating here. It's actually a concave diffraction grating, and it's mounted on a rotating post, and the post is connected to this potentiometer. And then on the output, there's another slit made with two more razor blades, and inside here there's a photomultiplier tube and a little power supply for it here. So if I turn the diffraction grating, slowly. It doesn't take uh, very much. I've only turned it maybe about 10 degrees there. Uh, we can see the optical spectra appears on the scope and it's really spiky like this because it's a mercury vapor lamp. It's a fluorescent with some phosphors to uh, bulk out to sort of make the spectrum more uh, pleasant to look at. So the idea here is we're using the oscilloscope as sort of a data logger and it's in XY mode, and the X-axis is controlled by the voltage coming out of this potentiometer, and the Y-axis is controlled by the voltage coming out of the photomultiplier tube. And I have persistence on and set to infinity, so as I scan across, it keeps the spectra on screen. I ran into an interesting problem with the scope setup. In XY mode, the scope is still triggered like it normally is in uh, time-based mode, uh, but the, as Dave Jones on the EEV blog pointed out, these tech scopes, if they don't have a trigger, they default to something pretty slow, like 10 hertz or 30 hertz or something like that. And uh, for this application, that's not going to work, because as I'm scanning along, the signal is changing quickly enough where you'd have to scan really slow to make a 10 or 30 hertz update rate work. So uh, what I did was I turned on the arbitrary function generator and set it to about 10 kilohertz and then plugged the function generator input into channel 3 and set up the trigger to actually be on uh, channel 3. So this way we can dial the trigger frequency of the scope up and down with uh, the function generator. Um, and then you can see the trigger frequency is reading out to be exactly 10 kilohertz there. So that was a pretty cool feature. I mean it's actually kind of nice to be able to set the trigger frequency when it's free running. Uh, I imagine that would actually be pretty handy for uh, other applications too. Anyway, so then in uh, acquire mode, I also set this to high res mode. So right now it's sampling at two and a half mega samples per second, and since the you know the the signal uh, is not changing very quickly from this uh, photomultiplier tube, what I really want is to get rid of the noise that would be inherent in this signal. So in in nor this normal sample mode, check out what that looks like. Oh, my light rolled away. Here we are. As you can see, it's uh, not even close to the same thing. Uh, there's so much uncertainty in the measurement that the scope is making the trace rather fat. So in high res mode, when we scan along, it's a much easier to see. It's uh, the, the, the triggering setup is much more appropriate uh, for the type of data that we're getting. You can also use the average mode so the way I understand this is in average mode it will uh, take a sweep and then in this case it's set to 16 so it'll actually take 16 sweeps and uh, average the traces all together. I'm not exactly sure how that works in XY mode. I tried it, here we'll turn it on and as you can see it's a nice sharp uh, trace like it is in high res mode however if I scan it quickly the trace is not overlapping because I'm moving quickly enough where the averaging is becoming a problem. So in high res mode, I believe what's happening is even though it's running at two and a half mega samples per second, it's actually averaging like point by point. So as it goes along, it's averaging as it's taking data, as opposed to the average setting, which takes an entire trace and then tries to average it with the subsequent 15 traces. So in this mode, uh, it's it's snappy enough where I can roll back through it and it almost traces over itself. This is actually probably mechanical slop in the system. And we're not getting quite the same spectra because this light bulb rolled out of the, the way. There we go. So if I uh, 
clear the persistence there. Here we're back to something halfway decent looking. Since the potentiometer has to be DC coupled into the scope uh, in order to read out the position, and it's a relatively small change, in fact this is like a 120 degree pot, but even still we're only turning it like 10 or 20 degrees, so we're not getting much swing in the signal. And uh, if I just used a 0 and 5 volt, for example, supply on the pot, uh, the voltage would be centered on 2.5 volts, and the scope would have a tough time dealing with that because we're really only interested in, you know, one volt of swing centered on two and a half or even less than that. And uh, to get around this problem I, I came up with a bipolar supply so that the pod is actually pretty close to zero and then I can use uh, almost no offset on the scope and still get a pretty good signal still uh, zooming in on the part that we want to look at. The y-axis is currently set at one volt per division so this is actually, uh, you know, about a one, two, three, four, almost a five volt signal to the peak here. And the way that I'm controlling the gain of this is by controlling the voltage to the photomultiplier tube. The output of the photomultiplier, the anode, has a 100K resistor going to ground. So a 10 volt signal there would correspond to 100 microamps of anode current, which is the maximum for this photomultiplier. Uh, it, that's handy because then I can always tell if the signal is getting close to 10 volts, that means I, I, there's too much gain. And uh, right now that I'm putting in about 6 volts into this power supply, which means I should be getting about 600 volts out. And that's about the bottom range for this photomultiplier. Uh, the stated or the rated voltage is about 1500. And I think I'll get probably two, maybe three or even four orders of magnitude more gain at 1500 volts. So in other words, this spectrometer can be way more sensitive than it currently is. So it's handy to be able to do a screen capture and just grab this spectra, that's, that's useful. What would be even nicer is to have this in data in the computer. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is to uh, set the scope to sweep slowly, not in XY mode, but just in time-based mode, and record two traces. Uh, set it up maybe so that it's about half a second per division or something and that will give me enough time to sweep through the whole spectra uh, then we can just save those two waveforms to a uh, thumb drive and import them on the computer and then plot the one channel against the other and I'll show that in a subsequent video okay see you next time bye